first of all, we know what's been driving the action and that bullish move we've seen in stocks over the course of this year-to-date period. It has been technology, communication services, and the consumer discretionary sector because of names like Meta and Tesla, NVIDIA, and others. Now, when it comes to the market cap side of things, check out what's happening on a year-to-date basis for the large, medium, and small cap parts of the market. We know that the large caps have been dominating. Mid caps are trying to play a little bit of catch up here as are small caps. You can kind of see that gap closing here in just the last couple of months or so. And then if you look on a more one month basis on some of these charts, check out what's happening here with the large cap, mid cap, and Russell 2000. Over the last month though, that Spider S&P 500 large cap ETF has taken more of that leadership role. So we'll see if that trend breaks or continues. For more on this and the trading day ahead, I'm joined now by Amy Wu Silverman, the head of derivative strategy over at RBC Capital Markets. Uh, Amy, this is always something we go to you with because you keep a close eye on what's happening with fund flows, the derivatives markets. Can we expect to see this bullishness continue given what some of the futures and options markets are telling us? Good morning, Dom. So look, when I look at the option tea leaves, sentiment a few months ago was probably at peak exuberance. And we're not seeing that now as we head into the fall. And, you know, we look at this in terms of the call demand upside and the put demand downside. And not only is the upside waning, not only is there less demand for those call options, you're starting to see the tick up and put demand rise on those mega cap tech stocks you just mentioned, like NVIDIA. Skew is something that you watch very closely as well. We, we talk about it often because it looks at the relative price of certain uh, bullish options versus the relative price of certain bearish ones. Is that kind of telling us a little bit more that skew about whether or not there is this, this anticipation, if you will, of further downside ahead? Yeah, that's a great question. And in 2022, so in 2022 last year, skew really underperformed. And what we mean by that was you had a market drawdown of over 20% of the S&P. And if you had owned puts last year, you managed to draw down 21%. So a total failure of skew coming into 2023. And essentially what happened is a lot of investors felt like hedges just weren't working. And you really saw that until the regional bank crisis, Dom, where people kind of remembered, oh, wait, there is a left tail. Um, and then that was masked again by the exuberance in the summer. And I do think that's coming back this year as we look to some things that catalyze low volatility, like perhaps the debt ceiling, perhaps strikes, or perhaps just the waning enthusiasm on you know, the mega cap tech and AI side. Amy, I I'd like to get to your word of the day because it has a little bit to do with the trends that we are seeing in the market. Can you take us through what your word of the day is? Yes, my word of the day is ride, as in are we getting off the ride uh, this fall? And the reason I say that is I think you know, and I think a lot of folks have become more aware that since the pandemic, you know, people really realize that option markets can exacerbate momentum either direction. You saw that during the YOLO meme crisis. You saw that during the kind of beginning of the AI crisis. And the question is, as that fades, do people get off the ride and do we see that exacerbation going in the opposite direction? If you take a look at some of those crazy parts of the market that have seen a lot of momentum, you mentioned artificial intelligence. Are there certain places in the market that you think will be better to be positioned in for the final few months of the year? So it's interesting, going back to the beginning of your segment where you looked at the breadth widening, essentially, and then kind of the trades, uh, growth versus value, small, mid versus large cap, those rotations happening. You do see a little bit more enthusiasm in the options market in something like an IWM or something that's more cyclical as we head into the end of the year. But I will tell you that differential isn't very high yet. I'd be curious if that widens as we head into the end of the and, year. And just before we let you go, a few seconds left, Amy your least favorite part of the market? So the concern right now is all in China and the China-related ETFs, FXI and EEM. All right, so some bearishness there as well. Amy Wu Silverman, thank you very much.